Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Let's Sing Okami, apparently. Uh, last episode, man, it was seriously day at the races. We chased down a mailman who was dropping spikes behind him and wagering his job over that. I'm not, I'm not sure if the Postal Service would, would enjoy that. Who knows, who knows would beat him and blow up something. Uh, and we also caught Hayazo the Thief. We made a mortal enemy and a valued friend, both of which are the same person. This episode, we're going to be collecting the last stray beads of the commoner's quarters and the aristocratic quarter. Uh, it, there's only actually one bead left in both, and both side quests can actually be started in the aristocratic quarter. I know that doesn't really make much sense for you to be able to get, uh, for you to be able to get, you know, start the commoner's quarters quest in the aristocratic quarter, but believe me, it will make sense what, once we start it. So, I will meet you in the, uh, the aristocratic quarter. Okay, here we are. I know it's really strange for me to be exiting the uh, Imperial Palace when I'm actually, when I wasn't heading, you know, I wasn't coming from that direction in, to begin with, but I actually just finished purchasing an item that will help us out in one of the quests. In fact, it's required for the quest. It is, let me show you, well, sorry, sorry, my, my apologies, I got that wrong in a failed take as well. Um, it's not required for a quest, but it's required for a stray bead later on. After Nine Tails is defeated, uh, the Emperor will sell a new item for Demon Fangs, the Water Tablet. It allows you to walk on the water surface, so that's really neat. It costs 100 Demon Fangs, so you can see I have 30, 31 left, but later, uh, and also another thing. Uh, I didn't get the the thieves glove because I didn't have oh that was creepy. I didn't have I didn't get the thief, the thieves glove frankly because we didn't have enough money for it. Um or not money, demon fangs. So I will be actually grinding for that at a later point because we are going to be going to the next area soon and I don't want to be backtracking that far just to get one item. So yeah. Uh something I should note is now that Himiko's dead, these guards will not block us, which yeah. makes sense. Queen Himiko, we knew this would happen, but we carried out our duty as ordered. Whatever your orders were, we will follow them gladly. That's nice, okay. So yeah, uh, where we, what we want to do for the first side quest, uh, I will be tackling both of these at once, uh, because they're, they're actually found in the same areas. We have to go across Nippon a lot during these side quests, and uh, these, they're both found in the same vicinity, so I will be tackling the Commoner's Quarter side quest before the Aristocratic Quarters. Uh, it'll make a little bit more sense later on, but anyway, if we go behind Himiko's palace, we'll find her handmaiden, who has something to tell us. Ah, it's you, Matarasu. I could, I could, ugh. I can't thank you enough for all you've done. That's the grave of our ruler, Queen Himiko. I'm sure your blessing would expedite her journey to heaven. Perhaps you could sprinkle divine water on her grave. Please, help her spirit to be released. Okay, we will do just that. If we take this water and and use Water Spout on all four graves, or all four monoliths, something special will happen. A new brush technique. Ah, Amaterasu, origin of all that is good and mother to us all. Being so removed from you had weakened me. In fact, I was very near death until your pure heart awakened me. I, Niragami, have harnessed the power of her tears. Drench the land with benevolence. I grant you the power of deluge. Deluge? Hey, I've heard of that one. Isn't that a power derived from Water Spout? All you gotta do is draw the mark of Niragami, god of Water Spout, to make it pour like cats and dogs. Now, what did that mark look like again? Well, anyway, if that power has awoke awoken here, that must mean Himiko is still watching over us. A very 
a very comforting thought indeed. So, with that, we get the scroll for the Water Spout Tech 2. And I will not be reading it, because I can just explain it. So, um, this is this is very similar to a lot of the the stream techniques, how, like, fi like uh, Inferno, we got Fire Burst, which allows us to create fire anyway, without needing a torch to do so. This is the exact same thing. Instead of needing a source of water to create water, not create water, but to uh, use it, we can now actually draw two vertical lines to create a deluge of rain. So enemies that have water floral finishers, like the blue, blue cyclops? Yes, the blue cyclops, um, we can now get the floral finishers of them without needing a source of water. So that's really neat. Okay, uh, where I want to go next is for the aristocratic uh, side quest. So we want to go over here, behind this tower, and we'll see a cat statue, which I took note of when we saw it the first time. So we want to use catwalk. No, not that way. Why did you do that? We want to use catwalk. Thank you. To scale this, this tower. And do I have enough? Yes, I do. Okay, let's do this one. Will I be able to reach? Bear! No, I didn't. Oh man. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, go up. There. That should work. Up, 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 up. Yeah, that works. So yeah, reaching the top, there's a door. Going inside the door... ...brings us to... ...this. We can see there's a very crude-looking circuit over here. Plus a chest that needs a uh, thunderstorm to open. It's also... The chest is also floating in the air, which I'm not really a fan of. Okay, we have this guy, an old dude. Ha. Huh. My masterpiece is but one step away from completion. All I need is the final part. He, <laughs> I like the light bulb on, on his head. It's like it's like he so one day he says to himself, Hey, whenever I get an idea, I get a light bulb above my head. So, to get more ideas, if I attach the light bulb to my head, Maybe I would become a genius. My invention would dramatically improve people's lives. It is the greatest test of my talents thus far. Floating contraption maker, Jen. I'm calling him Jen, not Gen, because I mean, first gen, you know, first generation iPod, you know, Jen. It's generation, so I'm calling him Jen. I I know not how you made it all the way up here, Snowflake. It is unusual for me to have visitors. But your timing could not be better. I needed a break. Would you like to hear the new scientific theory I'm advocating? Oh, um, uh, no thanks. We're not really into that kind of stuff. No, wait. We could talk about something else. I am quite a traveler and have seen much of Nippon, you know. And I have collected many strange odds and ends during my travels. Sculptures never seen before. Strange stones unlike any others. Such, such things have led me to believe that many ages ago, Nippon was home to a completely different c civilization from ours. A different civilization? Of course, no one c would ever believe me. But still, I gathered these odds and ends for my contraptions, and I have a wide range of them in the works. The odds and ends I find are of no use in and of themselves, but with some ingenuity, <laughs> ingenuity, Together they become living contraptions. My odds and ends are like dear friend, oh, dear old friends to me. Well, isn't that special? Can we go now? No, please wait. This is where it gets interesting. As you no doubt, as you doubtlessly noticed, I am nearly done with my masterpiece. However, I am missing a very last piece. I have come so far only to be thwarted the very last step. My masterpiece cannot come to life without that fi one final piece. Ha. Ah. Ha! Huh. To be sure, to just one step away from completing my masterpiece, all I need is just one gimmick gear. Without that single gear, my contraption would not move an inch. My, my contraptions truly are living creatures. Okay, so we we should be looking for the gimmick gear in our travels. Uh, I don't think we've heard any tell of this, but I know exactly where we can find such a thing, and we'll be going there next. The location we're going to for both of these side quests, well, we're going two separate areas, but they're right next to each other. Shinshu Field and Kamiki Village are our areas of choice. I will cut over there as soon as I leave here. I will end up in Kamiki Village to tackle 
the first part, well, not the first part, the second part of the first side quest. Let's go. On the way, I actually decided that I was going to take the shortcut from uh, Himiko's palace to Enkoku Temple. Uh, so I did so because, you know, it's the quickest route to an origin mirror where I could warp, but I decided, in the light of, of Rao being dead, we would examine the skeleton one last time. Oh man, the old bones are all that's left that of the real busty babe. Poor thing, left out here like that all this time. May she rest in peace. So yes, this is indeed Rao. This is where Rao ended up. I just, I just find this secret, because the first time we come through, he talks about how the clothes are familiar and leaves it up to the imagination. But the second time, if you actually invest the time to come look at the skeleton again, you will find out that it's actually Rao, and that, I don't know, it, it kind of sends shivers down my spine, seeing, you know, Rao, that is Rao, it just, I don't know, it, it hits me every time as being really somber, but at the same time, just, man, it's, it's game design, it's, it's so, it's so good, <sighs> but man, there's Rao, okay. I, I won't I won't gush about this game any longer. Uh, let's go. Man, is this one sight for sore eyes. Kamiki Village, after all this time. We have not been here for, man, 30 episodes, maybe? We ha the last time we were here was when we were, we were getting all of the canine warriors. And speaking of which, let's, let's talk to Hayabusa. My master has somehow changed lately. He now lives for the future rather than the present. Hey, that's great. He's finally found something else to do other than dip, dig up turnips. That's good. Okay, so where we want to go is where is even further, uh, right where right back where this entire adventure started, the Konohana tree. I uh, I do not want it to be nighttime. That's something I gotta say. I wish there was some sort of equipable that you could equip to keep it nighttime or keep it daytime. I, it's just it's just from a recording standpoint when I, I have to keep freezing time. That's not the best thing for you guys to watch, I guess. So anyway, uh, we have Sakuya. I, I'm interested in what she has to say, but I'm mostly interested in the people standing at her roots. Sounds really strange. Great mother, Okami Matarasu. May the fresh scent of flowers protect you always. That's all you have to say. Okay. So I actually want to go around here. There we go. Because there is a peach. Let power slash the peach and get Kutani pottery okay I have no idea what that is but more importantly what I want to do is talk to Camellia and Camille ah <sighs> the festival's over yeah I suppose we better s set off again soon but I cannot I can't bring myself to leave this village yet I mean this tree it blossomed when we th thought it we all thought it was dead for a dream it sure seemed real Okay. Sis, all the flowers really came out. It wasn't just a dream. It it must have been. It couldn't have been real. If someone would just hit me, I know I'll wake up from this dream. She thinks she's dreaming, eh? Well then, give her a good whack. That'll wake her up. Or, yeah, wake her up. Ouch! <laughs> I think the wolf likes you. Is that it? Sis, all the flowers, yes. Hit me, yes. If someone oh I, I must have hit the little girl okay I think I think I hit yeah I did okay boom ouch huh am I still dreaming so the flowers really did just burst out over the oh, bleh. so the flowers really did just burst out all over this tree but it can't be surely miracles don't really happen do they maybe they do maybe they don't maybe they do maybe they don't they do <laughs> okay, so that's that sets off this quest. I know it seems kind of random to do this, but this sets off a quest that we will be seeing the effects of in uh, Seon City. Next, I would like to go to Shinshu Field to tackle something, quite literally, that I've been wanting to do since the first few episodes. Uh, you remember Ida, right? Ida is the guy that's running all over Shinshu Field, just like Hayate is in Ryoshima Coast. He has a side quest for us, but you guys remember that because I was raging for whatever reason because I got really confused as to when that side quest appeared, but now it's now it's a thing. Let's go. Whoa. 
That legit scared me. Okay, so uh, Shinshu Field is a little bit different from when we saw it last. It's overcast. We're hearing thunder, which I love thunder. I could totally go to sleep to the sound of thunder. Man, that's so cool. I love, I love, I love thunderstorms. They're just, they're really, they're just an awesome thing to behold. So anyway, uh, we're we're not here for the sights, although we will be here later for the story. Uh, we are here right now to find Ida. So if we just run along this path, we should bump into him. I should really be running the other direction because, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna run the other direction because. He runs the direction that I was running, so if I run the other direction, I'm bound to run into him. Sometime. Ida. Ida, buddy. Ida. Ida, come here. Where are you, buddy? Come here. I don't want you to get struck by lightning. I'm just here for your safety, not mine. Yours. Where are you? Where is the guy? Ida. Bro. Where... Where are you? Where... Are you? Ida? Seriously, bro. I'm getting a little worried as to where you are. Ida? Oh, there you are. Thank goodness. You're alive. Oh, I was kind of worried. Maybe, like, for so somehow we missed the side quest because of story, but that makes no sense. I was really worried there. Phew. I'm firing all on all cylinders again today. So, what do you want? What's with, what's with the twinkle in your eye, Pooch? You want to race? Okay, Lightning Ida will t give you a run for your money. Okay, so this is the same exact deal as Hayate, except it's a little bit different, because he's better than Hayate. Okay, so we same deal, though. I Does slowing time down do anything? No, okay, he's he's immune to that. No, get, you, get over here. Ami, full throttle, full throttle, Ami, full throttle, Ami for Toby and country. No, not, not for Co Toby and fail. Toby and country. I'm trying to do this for my country. Let me hit you for my country. Let me hit you. Phew. What? You caught up with me already? Oh. I'd never have guessed it, but you're a real sprinter, Pooch. That's one point for you. Ha 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 ha. Okay, we get praise. And uh, yeah, before before we do anything else, I'm going to upgrade something because I don't want to... Actually, I forgot. You don't lose the 500 praise, but I want to uh, I want to upgrade my health. I know this is a little bit spontaneous, but I, I would like to do this. So we're almost to full health, actually. So let's talk to this guy again. Get over here. I'd be better speed if I... I'd be better... I'd better speed up if I'm losing to a wolf. I'm going to polish up these golden feet of mine, so come back soon. And by soon, you mean... that. No. Yeah, that worked. Okay. Yep. It's it's magical. Yep, it's I'm a magical wolf. Where are you? Let me talk to you. Hey there, Pooch. I'm always running about, so it passed me by. But I just heard that Susano took on or Orochi. That guy's really something, huh? Maybe there will be less lo monsters getting in the way in Shinshu now. Anyway, you haven't forgotten our little competition, have you? I've been practicing. I'm a whole lot faster than I was before. Anyway, can't chat. Gotta fly. Ready? Go! Okay, I I think there is a strategy for this. Stupid demon scroll. Just do this, and you should catch up with them. Yes, okay. So if you pretty much just run in a straight line, cut that corner, you should be able to cut them off uh, maybe seven times out of ten. It really it really depends on your spacing. Phew, you caught up with me again. Yes, you're fast. I'm top sprinter. Two victories under my belt. 20 praise. 30, okay. 30. Triple. Hopefully I get 90 next time. Okay. Uh, daytime. And then we can talk with him again. Oh, no! Get back here! It's good he, he runs much slower uh, when you're not racing. Aha, there you are. Listen, Pooch, I need to talk to you. I, Lightning, uh, Lightning Ida, want to challenge you. I want to take back the title of Shinshu's number one once and for all. You've totally outclassed me up to now, but I'm not, go I'm not going to run staring at your tail whacking anymore, pal. And just to show you how serious I am this time, I'm putting my family treasure, the gimmick gear, as my stake. Yep. I still remember it, that night of a thousand shooting stars. One of them just fell right out of the sky into my lap. That was the gimmick gear. That steel cogwheel just dropped down right in front of me. And it couldn't, have just, it couldn't be just an accident. The gods must have planned it. They were telling me to keep running for the rest of my life by giving me a gear. Ha ha ha! Ha ha! 
<laughs> I guess you could say he's kicking it into gimmick gear. Ah, <laughs> it wasn't really that good. <clears throat> to keep delivering my meals fast as my mail as fast as I possibly could, I live for my job, and that that gears my good luck charm. And I'm putting my faith in it now. I know it'll help me win. So, time we got the show on the road, right? Come on then. Now for wrath. Now for ruin. And a gear. Okay, I believe we can just cut him off. Oh, he's dropping spikes this time, just like his bro. Defeat it! No! You don't run away! No! Don't be Teemo! Don't be Teemo! I've, ma I've been making a ton of League of Legends references the past couple days, but you know what? I don't care. This guy's dropping Noxus traps like no one's business! What? No way! Lightning eat of the Dr Dan Dan Gan. Is that like anything like Dunban? The Dan Gan Express. Beaten in the greatest and most important match of my life? <laughs> you haven't just scored a point off me this time. That's gotta be worth a million points. <laughs> well, promise is a promise, Pooch. My lucky charm's yours. It should always belong to number one the number one sprinter in Shinshu. You obtained the gimmick gear! My little brother from Ryoshima said my little bro brother from Ryoshima said he'd seen an amazing wolf. Guess you must have made a name for yourself over there too, huh? Well, you're the fastest creature I've ever met, that's for sure. I guess the gods won't mind if I'm rel relinquishing the title of Shinshu's number one to you. But it's an important title, so make sure you honor it, it honor it, okay? I'm going to keep on running and running and running. And one day I'll take the title back from you. You'll see. 50 praise! Very, very good reward. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and read my guide. This is really unprofessional, but I'm doing it. Okay, so next... Man, that's really cool. That's so cool. I, lo I love that. Come on, I want I want one more clap of thunder for, for the road, please. Yeah, that was cool. Okay, reminds me, I, I should like listen to that symphony tonight as I'm going to sleep. Anyway, uh, where we want to go is uh, Shinju Fi- uh, sorry, my bad. Uh, Seon City, because... Now that we have completed that and gotten the gimmick gear, we can go see Jen. And also, now that we have spoken to Camille and Camellia, we will be seeing them again. So let's go. Down here. Oh, where is it? Where is it? This way? I have no idea why the map is circled, or the thing on the map is circled, but what I do know is, uh, Origin Mirror. Warp. Boom. Crashity bang. Shazamity lamb. Okay, here I am. Man, that tunnel gives me the shivers. I wouldn't take it if it wasn't such a good route for getting from Ryushima Coast to uh, to Seon City, but man, it gives me gives me the heebie-jeebies big time. You know what also gives me the heebie-jeebies as we're going to the commoners' quarters? Man, whenever um, whenever you see a a model that hasn't completely rendered in. It appears as a silhouette. I will put. Uh, oh wait, I'll, I'll wait on that. Uh, it, it's not just any silhouette. It's not like a dark outline of a character. It's colored. I have no idea what the color, uh, what the color is based off of, because there are all sorts of different colors, from pink to green to blue. But it's the blue one that I want to talk about. The blue one, since you're seeing it from a distance, and uh, yeah, since you're seeing it from a distance and only for a moment. It just gives me a brief flash of fee, and that that would be fine if this were Skyward Sword, but this is Okami, and I'll tell you, even though it's not scary, it's it's something where my heart skips a beat, and I actually get kind of like a scare for no no apparent reason. It's like a jump scare. It could be a bunny, but it doesn't. I don't expect it, so I see fee, and I'm like, oh my word, fee, and it just it's just really freaky. I put like I believe I just said I'll put a picture on screen of what I'm talking about right now, but. I, I see that, and my, just heart, my heart just goes boom. I hope you could hear that because I pounded my chest right there, and it scares me. Okay, so where we want to end off the Camellia side quest and get the last stray bead of the Commoner's Quarters is right here. After talking to these people, uh, I believe you ha yeah you have to have uh, learned Deluge for this. This is the side quest that was needed. That that technique was needed. We talked to these people, and. Hey, aren't you that wolf we saw back in Kamiki Village? We traveled a long time to get all the way here. How did you get here so fast? I guess you've been traveling yourself. I'm just, I've just about ha had enough of being on the road. Can we talk to you again? Look, sis, it's that dog again. There's some pretty makeup on its back. Here we go again. It's just a normal white dog, I tell you. 
You're always making up such strange stories. You need to take a, a bit more interest in the real world. Okay, so we saw those flowers appear back in Kamiki, but flowers blossom all the time. People see it every day. Maybe if trees appeared right out here out of nowhere, well, just stay in the real world for once. But, but, I can see the makeup right there. Uh. So, this is, once again, hinted at that uh, if you're a believer in a Matarasu, you'll see a Matarasu as she really appears. But if not, you'll just see her as a normal, plain white wolf, even though white wolves are really not plain and they're gorgeous. So, she said, maybe if a tree appeared right next to me. That's oddly, oddly specific, but that's actually a power we have. It's not something that, you know, it's, is advertised and certainly not something that's used, but it's something that sh is shown on the title screen in one of the cinematics. If you just draw a dot on the ground, a tree will sprout up out of nowhere. Oh my goodness! I don't believe it! Right in front of us! A tree, ju a tree just appeared right in front of us! How can that be? Let's talk to her again. Wahoo! A brand new tree! The gods must have made it! But gods aren't the only ones who can create trees. Maybe if there was rain right after the tree appeared. But otherwise, I don't believe in it. There are no gods. So she's not a believer, so we have to make her believer. Odd. Okay. So she said if a tree appeared and then rain appeared, she would believe. So tree and then rain. Are you a believer? <laughs> oh my goodness. No way. Wahoo, it rained, it rained! The gods made it rain! It's funny, because I was just thinking. I was just thinking about it raining after that tree appeared. But that means... It means the gods must know what I'm thinking, or speaking aloud. Um, can you hear me, gods? Do you really exist? 50 praise. And I believe if we talk to Camellia... Hello, doggy. I found a pretty round stone the other day. I'm sure the gods must have dropped it. Here, it's yours. You obtain stray bead. So that is the last stray bead. We get it from Camellia. Um, doggy, can you tell me who does your makeup for you? I can see it now too. It's very faint, but I can see it. I can see the signs, a sign of the gods right there. Ooh, isn't that great, doggy? You managed to make my sister tr see your true colors. Aw, that's that's adorable. Okay, so let's talk to her. We're traveling around in, in search of our our ancestors' hometown. Apparently, they planted divine trees all over Nippon. And legend has it, they let the gods live in our land. I never believed in that story till now. I thought we'd just be wandering around forever. But now I know that there's a, there is an end in sight. It could still be a long journey before we discover the place. But somewhere out there, we'll, we'll find it. Surrounded in divine trees. I'll help you find it, sis. Let's go back to the land of our ancestors. Wow, so... Wow, that's actually pretty cool. Their family was actually the one that planted the Konohano saplings. Wow. I, I did not know that. That is such cool backstory. Especially since she wasn't, you know, a believer. And here we have the wolf who's been blooming all those trees and making them full ground, full grown, crossing paths with her. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty astounding. Okay. Let's finish off this episode proper by going back to the aristocratic quarter and tackling that one side quest. Back in Jen's tower with the gimmick gear and paw, we can talk to Jen. Many contraption have I built. Chitty's checkpoint dig big drawbridge and Gojo bridge here in Seon City. But now my masterpiece is but one tiny step away from completion. All I need is a single gimmick gear. Without that single gear, my contraption would not move an inch. Must I once again roam these lands in search of the final part? Hmm? Snowflake, that gear of yours. Could it be the gimmick gear? The very last part I require? Hmm, it appears to be the perfect size and shape. Indeed, that is the mission gear that I am missing. Give it here! Please, I must have that gear. Hopefully that doesn't sound completely horrid in the microphone. Off of the gimmick gear? I want it! Uh, sure. <laughs> Oh, thank you, my fine furry friend. When my masterpiece is complete, I shall write your name in small letters near the, e the end of my encyclopedia of contraptions. Now, to complete my masterpiece. Now, I can see how he, how he played that. He could play like an old man, and then as soon as he gets it, he's like, I am cool. I don't need anyone's help. Are you ready, Snowflake? You are about to witness history in the making. My contraption is about to come to life. 
This shall herald the monumental advance in people's lives. Now for the moment of truth. I, Jen the Contraption Maker, give you my masterpiece, Lightning Bringer! So, we see his circuit, we see a faint pattern in it. We are supposed to capitalize on that faint pattern. Make hi history in the making. We are... Igor! I think I failed, yeah, I, I failed. We are... Igor! I have failed! Did I really fail? Don't look so surprised, Snowflake. Why, this sort of thing happens all the time. There could not possibly be a fall flaw in my design. I just need to shit a bit and lower then lower the lever again. I doubt that's going to work. I mean, just look at that contraption there. The copper wire right there in the middle is disconnected. Can we... Listen, Snowflake. Failure is an inevitable part of great inventions. The trick is to transform those failures into success. After all, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% luck. Luck? What happened to the per the perspiration part? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure it's luck. I mean, it'll it'll work it'll work this time. I, Jen, the contraption maker, give you my masterpiece, Heimerdinger. Okay, let's do it right. Now for Heimerdinger. No, I did it wrong. Try it again. Okay, focus this time, pal. Focus and bring out your inner electricityness. Boom, bang, crash! No. Boom, bang, crash? Boom, bang, crash? Not... No! Okay, I'll stop. Talk! Skip! Let me... Let me do this, please, sir. Please, lightning bringer. Yep, I get it. I get it. I get it. Do we start? No, we're not supposed to start from the bottom. I've always had trouble with this. Uh, uh, uh. Yes! I didn't really do it well, but I did it fast, and that's all that mattered. Ah, Matarasu, origin of all that is good and mother to us all. My power had diminished while I, you were away. But that man's zeal and your own pure heart have restored my power. I have harnessed his fervent energy to bestow upon you a new power. Light the sky with a thunderbolt! And with that, he has <coughs> sort of invented electricity. Look, look! My design was not flawed after all. It may be a bit overpowered, but at least my masterpiece is complete at last. It would appear that you do not quite understand. Such a grand invention as this may be well beyond your comprehension. You should go look up back. You should go look up at my house from outside. Then perhaps you should see the cr true grandeur of my masterpiece. Wow. Can we? All I think we can actually already upgrade. No, we can't. We're a little bit short. Wow, that's really something getting this huge thing to move, but enough about that. Remember that shape you drew on me? You know, the shape to fill in the missing part of the wire? Well, that's the mark of Gekigami, the god of lightning. Just dr by drawing that mark, you can summon lightning anytime, anywhere you want. So yeah, we have another another technique sort of like that. And we have a scroll describing it, as if you already didn't see it used. So, um... The stray bead part of the side quest is not given by Gen or Jen. I personally normally call him Gen. I kind of forgot that. Uh, it comes from this chest right here. Uh, it, once you have the the thing, the certain this technique, Thunderbolt, we can use it on this chest to open it. Sorry, we can use it on this chest to open it. There we go. Um. Okay, it worked. There is our stray bead. Now, I have found. Uh, to use this technique also uses up a ton of ink. It's insane how much this uses because it's super powerful. I show it in battle sometime soon. Um, to use this, I don't I don't draw the line exactly like it shows there because it doesn't work half the time. What I do is the second line, the middle horizontal one, I actually draw it diagonally upward a little bit, and that seems to get the best result, like that. See, it works. It works very well. So do it like that, and you should be able to get it a lot of the time. 
Uh, so yeah, there we go. We have a new technique to create electricity or thunder or lightning or or plasma anywhere. Get out. <laughs> okay, that is going to be it for this episode. Uh, and sadly, I won't be able to show the end slate of the thunderstorm Shinshu Field, but that's fine. I can show Gen's Tower, show what we helped create, even though we barely got any credit for it. I don't really care. Either way, it was fun. And we can see what his tower is, uh, but we will be seeing it in the end slate. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this episode, please comment. If you didn't like this episode, then comment and tell me how I can make next episode so that you would like it. Uh, I release new episodes of Okami Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays are long episodes. And next time in Okami, you're probably really curious as to what we're going to be doing. We are going to be getting some of the last stray beads in a lot of the areas that, um, that have stray beads open to us. <laughs> Including one that you probably won't expect. It's, it's pretty neat. I, I'm sort of looking forward to it. If you guys thought that, that the, uh, Devilgate Trial Cave was a big battle, you guys ain't seen nothing yet.